Hi, I'm Alex, and on this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to walk you through how to sculpt armor and weapons for tabletop miniatures. So, the first piece of advice I would give is to have a design for the armor that you want to sculpt prepared beforehand. And this is something that you'll find out is very important as soon as you sit down to start sculpting armor because a suit of armor is actually quite complicated and there's a lot of things that need to work in tandem together. So having a plan for what you want the armor to look like before you start sculpting can be very, very important. And now with that out of the way, I can get to the actual sculpting. As you can see here, I've been sculpting out the breastplate using the same technique that I showed off in the first video I did on sculpting miniatures which I'll leave a link to in the description of this video as well as in the card. But for those of you who haven't seen that video, I'm simply pushing and pulling the green stuff over and over again to create ridges and edges, as you can see me doing here. As I move on to do the other parts of the armor, it's very important to not neglect the other parts of the miniature that aren't going to be covered in armor. Here I am adding some green stuff to the under part of the arm and that's going to act as something like a gambeson or whatever clothing that they will have underneath the pauldrons that I'm going to be adding later. And you'll notice that I do this basically anywhere on the arms and legs where I'm going to be adding a piece of armor of some kind. And now having addressed where the armor will not be on the arm, I can start adding the pauldron. I decided I wanted to have there be kind of two layers to the pauldron, so one sheet of metal underneath another. So here I'm adding the first layer of metal. Sculpting miniatures with large amounts of armor is honestly something I would suggest to any beginning sculptor. It's very good practice for figuring out how to sculpt large, bold shapes, which is something that, as you can imagine, is very important for sculpting other miniatures. These skills that you learn in doing armor bleed into most everything else that you will also sculpt. So I would definitely suggest for some of your first miniatures, do characters that have lots of armor on them. As you can see here, I've started to add the second piece of metal for the pauldron and have begun to sculpt it into the shape that I'm looking for. Sometimes I find it can also be helpful to use a craft knife to really make those edges of your metal nice and flat. I then move on to work on the legs and as you can see here, I'm doing the same baggy pants method that I again showed off in the first video I did on sculpting miniatures. And I then move on to work on the rest of the bits of armor plating that I want to add to this miniature, doing the same stuff that I did for the first ones that I showed off. Alluding to a gambeson or other material underneath where the armor plating will be, and then adding on said armor plating. Sometimes I also will add indentations for where the straps that attach the metal plating to the limb are as well. The other thing I wanted to show you how to do in this video was how to do weapons and shields and that sort of thing. So here you see me working on the sword. I start by taking a little piece of green stuff and putting a wire in it, and then I go and put that on a flat sculpting tool. Once you have the green stuff and the wire on your sculpting tool or your base, you can start to sculpt out the shape. Here I'm primarily using my round sculpting tool and I start to sculpt out the two flat sides of this sword and making sure there's a little ridge that goes down the middle of the blade. This can be a little bit tricky to do and even I find that I struggle to get a perfect shape sometimes, but it can be helpful to use a crafting knife if you have to, especially to make sure that the edges of the blade are nice and straight. And once you have that in a place where you like it, I also take one of the bigger round sculpting tools and roll it up each side of the blade and that gives it a nice concave shape that most swords are. While I leave that to set, I start working on the shield. Here you can see that it just start with a random shape and I would honestly suggest doing this not shaping it before you put it on the base so that you can get better and practice shaping the material into what you want it to look like and it's just a good practice to get used to so that you can become a better sculptor. 
Once again, as I mentioned with the sword, you can use a craft knife to flatten out some of the edges that you want to be perfectly flat. I find that sometimes this can be better than the round sculpting tools because it gets a harder edge. Once I have the shield shape in a place that I like it, I go and add a little bit more green stuff to make it rim to parts of the shield. Using a rubber sculpting tool to push up on the material to make a nice solid edge and then flattening the little bit of material to make that edge even more pronounced. I also do that to the top of the shield and now can move on to add a little bit of a detail I wanted to add into the middle of the shield. And when doing these fine detailings, I suggest that you use a mixture of green stuff that has a little bit more blue stuff and wait for the green stuff that you're going to be doing the detail on top of is fully set. Both of these things ensure that the green stuff that you're adding is easily workable for these small details. Otherwise, the green stuff is very sticky and doesn't like to stay where you tell it to. As well as adding the details that I did to the shield, I go and do some similar details to the sword. And while all that stuff sets, I want to show you how I do chainmail. I've got this quick kind of uh, cheat to make a basic looking chainmail. As you see here, I start with the general shape that I want the chainmail to be in and mark out some diagonal lines with a craft knife into the green stuff. I then take the smallest circular sculpting tool and start to pull up the green stuff by spinning said tool. Then, as you can see, you continue to do this down the line, and as you add these layers on top of each other, it starts to resemble chainmail. I found this is the best way of doing chainmail without sitting there for hours with the needle sculpting out a perfect chainmail. Once you have gone over all of it, you can grab a needle and start cleaning up the edges, as well as any part inside the chainmail that you think could be a little bit different and then I let it set fully. While I wait for the chainmail to set, I add some more green stuff to the back of the shield to clean it up a little bit, and can then go on to add that to my miniature with a little bit of green stuff on his one arm. Now that the chainmail has set, I quickly just take that off of the base and add that to the miniature. And now I can finish up the sword that we've been working on. I start by taking my craft knife and prying it off of the sculpting tool that I was working on it with. And then I begin to take this wire that we put in there out of the sculpt. That way we have a nice little channel on the back of the blade that we can now go and slide into the wire that is attached to our miniature's hand. Here I take a little bit of liquid green stuff and I apply that to the back of the sword to attach it to the wire on our miniature, but you don't have to use liquid green stuff, you can just use a little bit of green stuff. After that, you're going to want to repeat the process that you did on the sword while on the sculpting tool on the back of the sword. And this can be a little bit more finicky because the green stuff is not as hard as of course a piece of metal or the base that you might have done it on. So you're going to want to make sure that the sword is completely set so you can just have your thumb behind it to make sure that it's as flat as possible, not having to worry about messing up any of the details that you've done. Once that sets, you're going to want to clean up the edges a little bit where the green stuff that you've added might have spilled over to the stuff you sculpted beforehand. But once you've done that, then your armor, your sword and your shield are finished. Thank you so much for watching that video. To those of you who are sculpting miniatures, I hope that you found it helpful. And if you have any questions or topics that you would like me to tackle in future videos, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed that video, please leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of when I release more videos. You can also go check out my Instagram where I plan on releasing more exclusive content on other sculpts that I'm making that won't show up in videos. And you can check that out in the link in the description. Anyways, once again, thank you so much for watching that video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.